I got a new intro. How's it going? And welcome to JK is hot. No. Welcome to John Kelly. That's right. I've changed the name of the channel. Now, for those of you wondering, why would I go and do something like that? Let me tell you a little bit about the history of this channel. See, when I started this whole thing, it wasn't to create a channel. I was literally just doing hiking videos so that my buddies who were supporting me on my Shell Toey Trace hike would be able to watch what it was I was doing and making sure that everything they were helping me with wasn't going in vain. I didn't know that a year later I would start making these talking head videos and I, I had no clue that more than 20 people would ever watch a single one of these things. And something really awkward has started happening. Whenever I go out on a trail and somebody happens to recognize me, they call me JK is hiking. They don't call me by my name. They call me by JK is hiking. Like JK is my first name, is is my middle name and hiking is my last name. JK is hiking. That's not my name. I realized if I'm going to do something like this and I wanna get to know other people and I wanna communicate with you guys, I don't wanna communicate with you as a character, I wanna communicate with you as me. We're still all about hiking, backpacking, and gear, and today we're gonna to continue that by talking about one of the most fundamentally important things in backpacking, and that socks. So I tried to break down four different kinds of socks that you can wear when you're on the trail, going all the way from your budget merino wool sock to your Die hard standby to something a little awkward but works really well to a complete wild card. And we're gonna talk about all four of these socks and we're gonna kinda talk about what they're made of, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, how much they cost, and we're gonna get into a little bit of, well, what if they malfunction? Can you get your money back? Can you get a new pair of socks? We're going to talk about that with all four of these socks. Now, before we get too deep into all of this, Let's break down into what makes a sock a good hiking sock or a good backpacking sock. The first thing is you want something that's gonna keep your feet dry because you know they're gonna get wet at some point, but are they gonna dry out quickly? Are they gonna wick sweat away from your feet? That's a very important component when it comes to picking out the right sock. And one of the biggest materials used by sock companies in the backpacking world is merino wool. Now you're probably going, what makes merino wool so much better than other wool? It's a natural odor barrier. It's also very good at, at keeping your feet still warm, even if they get wet. So they're fantastic in colder weather and the winter time. So all of these socks that are up here have some kind of a component of, of merino wool in them minus one. And we'll get to that in a little bit, but why don't we go ahead and talk about that first sock the Wildly Good Crew Sock. Wildly Good Socks were created by a guy named Christian who decided back in 2018 that he wanted to create his own sock business. One of the main characteristics of these socks is that they are made with what he calls Australian extra fine merino wool. He found that the uh, merino wool from the sheep in Australia is a finer fabric and it just does a better job of everything that merino wool is supposed to do. That's their claim. They're made with 86% merino wool. That's the most wool you're gonna find in just about any hiking sock out there. These are made with 10% polyester, 3% nylon, and 1% spandex as well. And these are really comfortable. As a matter of fact, this last year for Christmas, I got my wife two pairs of these socks, and they're some of her favorite socks. She loves wearing them at night. They're extremely comfortable. My wife doesn't hike, but I'm trying to ease her into the thought process of getting out there with me. So I thought maybe if I get her some really comfortable socks, 
maybe she'll go out. One of the great things about these socks is they come in at a whopping $14 a pair. Honestly, that is an amazing price for something that's got that much merino wool in it. And if you get on their website, a lot of times they're doing deals where you can get two pairs of socks for $20. It's $10 a pair. That's half the price of some of your mainline backpacking socks. These are a really good deal. Now to be completely transparent with you, I put these on here as a budget option because they are one, made with merino wool, two, they are considered a hiking sock, and three, they are cheap. These are inexpensive. One of the great things, they have a 30 day warranty. If you get them within 30 days, if you're not pleased, you can send them back for a full refund. And they also warranty the socks for the first year. So if you have any worn spots or the threading comes out or anything goes wrong with these material wise or with the construction, they will replace the sock. If you wanna check these out, you can go out to wildlygoods.com. The website's right below. You can check for them in the description of the video. Excellent option if you're looking for something in the budget realm. Now, if you've ever talked to somebody who's done a lot of hiking or done a through hike, if you watch other channels like this one where they talk about gear that you can buy and socks and shoes and, and all the different things that you can have for backpacking, one brand seems to be pretty consistent that all of us at some time have tried them out and that's Darn Tough Socks. Darn Tough Socks are probably the gold standard among most people in the backpacking and hiking world as far as being the greatest sock out there. And one of the big reasons for that is they have the greatest warranty of any other brand. They simply say on their website, they're unconditionally guaranteed for life. That means anything happens to these socks, they're gonna replace them. All you have to do is take them to a local outfitter, turn them in, and they will hand you another pair, and you walk out with a brand new pair of socks. And with a $21 a pair price tag, it's probably good that they do that. Let me just start off by saying I really enjoy Darn Tough Socks. This pair right here I have used uh, in, in at least five or six different states on multiple different trips. One of the great things about Darn Tough Socks is that they have awesome arch support right here in the middle of the sock. It really does hug the center of your foot so that the sock doesn't slip. One of the things that causes blisters is when there's a lot of rubbing. And when you're walking through creeks, there's water. There's not only water, there's dirt. And then if it gets hotter, your feet sweat and that sweat turns into crystallized salt on your feet. You can't see it, it's there, trust me, it hurts. When it all rubs together, you got a problem, and what this does is it hugs the sock tight to your feet to guarantee that your, your feet aren't sliding in and out of the sock as you walk along. One of the things I've always loved about these socks is that they do a great job of drying up while you're hiking. Let's say you just walked through a, a creek crossing or something and, and water, of course, is gonna seep right through those trail runners into your socks. It's gonna soak your feet, soak the socks, soak the shoes. The nice thing about these, unlike the wildly good socks, they aren't 86% merino wool. Now, merino wool does a great job of, of wicking away sweat. It does a great job of keeping your feet from stinking. It also does a really, really good job of keeping your feet warm even when they are wet. But when you want your feet to dry up, synthetic fabrics just do a better job of wicking away moisture and drying up. That's the great thing about these socks. They're made with 54% nylon and 43% merino wool. You've got a nice synthetic sock that is still got a lot of merino wool in it. So you get those, those warming elements, you get that odor element where it takes the odor out of your feet, but these will dry out much faster than the wildly good socks could ever dream of. You can get these socks for $21 a pair at virtually any outfitter. Trust me, if you've never used Darn Tough socks, I would suggest you at least get a pair and try them. One of the other great things about Darn Tough, they give you 90 days to get to know your socks. It literally says that on the website. If you want to get to know your socks and see if they're worth keeping, they will give you a 100% refund on your socks if you don't like them within 90 days of the date of purchase. So there really are a win-win. If you've never tried Darn Tough socks, I would suggest Go out and buy a pair, give them a try, and see what you think. The next sock on our list is one that many of you are probably gonna roll your eyes the moment I start talking about them, but they are an interesting type of sock. <laughs> that would be the toe sock from Njinji. Specifically, these are the Spectrum Trail Midweight Cruise. 
These are actually really comfortable socks. But before I talk to you about how much I like them, let me explain what these are made of, how much they cost, and what's the benefit of having toe socks in the first place. The socks are made with 39% Coolmax, which is a synthetic fabric. Uh, made for these socks. They're made with 58% nylon and 3% lycra spandex. You can pick these up for $19 a pair at your local outfitters. And if your outfitter doesn't carry them, you can find them on Amazon, you can find them at REI, you can find them on backcountry.com, Camp Saver, you name it, you'll be able to find these socks somewhere where you can purchase them. Now, one of the things I will say before we even get into this, there are a lot of you already who are just like, toe socks? Why in the world would I wanna wear toe socks. There's a few reasons, actually. One of the worst places to get blisters is between your toes. I know, I've had them multiple times, and I've had pinky blisters that were so bad that the blister was the size of my pinky. And trying to wrap your entire toe in Luco tape just causes the toe next to it to rub the entire time, and before too long, you just got out of control blisters. Toe socks are great because they keep your toes from rubbing against each other. And as we said earlier, any kind of rubbing on your skin is gonna cause blisters. And so this is a great way to protect each toe from rubbing against the one next to it, causing those awful between the toe blisters that are brutally painful. Another big plus about these socks is there is no merino wool in these. Now, some people are saying, what do you mean there's no merino wool? This is backpacking. You can't have backpacking socks without merino wool! As we said earlier, merino wool is great at keeping your feet warm. It's great at, at fighting odor. It does a good job of wicking away sweat, but it doesn't dry very quickly. The main purpose of socks like these are to avoid blisters. And so if you're trying to avoid blisters the best you can, one of the best ways you can do that is by having a fully synthetic sock. Now, I know a lot of people are just looking at me right now thinking, I hate you, you're just terrible. How dare you say that? Well, get your own channel. These socks, however, really do dry out quick. Uh, I've taken these on a few hikes already. One where I walked through creek crossing after creek crossing after creek crossing, where I walked through dew and where I got rained on at the end of my hike. These dried out so stinking fast. And that's one of the big pluses of synthetic socks is that simple fact that they dry out quickly. Now, a lot like the darn tough socks, they do have an arch support in the middle and there's extra cushioning on the bottom of the feet to protect your feet as you're hiking. What they do is very smart. They remove a lot of the padding off the top of the sock, reducing weight, reducing more area that has to dry and allowing the feet to breathe a little bit more because of it. I'm still not sure if I like uh, this. I don't know, it's kind of cool, I guess, but I was given these socks, so I can't really say much, but I will say that I plan on hiking this summer wearing these socks. I really do like them. I've been wearing Njinji liners now for a couple years, and I've really enjoyed hiking in Njinji liners. I'm a big fan of liner socks, but I'm not gonna talk about that here. If you're interested in hearing me talk more about liner socks and about how to prevent blisters, uh, leave a comment below. I would love to, to talk about that if that's something you guys are interested in. But for now, let's stick to the socks. And Gingy socks come with a one year limited warranty. In other words, as long as the sock doesn't fail in the first year, uh, they might replace it. Literally, that's what it says on their website. They may replace the socks. And you have 60 days from the day of purchase to return them, so long as you never put them on or took them out of the original packaging, which means basically um, it's not really a refund. It's just basically saying, oops, I bought the wrong socks. But with all that said, for $19, this is a really good pair of socks, and I am planning on wearing these all summer long. And if you stick around to the end of this video, you might find out how you can get your hands on four pairs of Njinji socks. So uh, stay tuned. And now for the wild card. I told you about these three kinds of socks over here. You've got a, a really nice budget merino wool option. You've got the old standby darn tough socks and you've got the really weird toe socks. But I'm gonna push those out of the way to introduce you to the sock that I never thought could really exist, but it does. This past February, I got the opportunity to get together with seven other guys, uh, six other YouTubers, and, and one of their friends. And we all went up to Wisconsin to go backpacking. 
in a foot of snow. And so I came up with this really stupid idea. I decided I'm gonna go out and get my hands on some waterproof socks and I'm gonna wear trail runners the entire weekend. Now, now understand something. It was in the 20s, there's a foot of snow, and the next day it was gonna get up to around 40, 45 degrees. And what happens at 40, 45 degrees, snow melts and becomes very, very wet. Needless to say, this could have ended up being the biggest disaster in the world. But I'm gonna tell you something, it wasn't. It was a full blown success. And I wanna talk to you about a waterproof sock. That's right. I can't even believe I'm talking about it, but a waterproof sock, and this is a sock that I didn't think could exist, a sock that really does what it says. I bought these on a whim. I had watched a video from Backpacking with Jason. Jason Wall had been out backpacking and he wore these socks and talked about them and talked about how good they were on his feet and how his feet never got wet. And all I could think is something that's not gonna let your feet get wet is gonna have to make your feet sweat. Now I will tell you, these are not cheap. These socks will run you around 40 to $45 a pair, but these might be some of the most comfortable socks I've ever worn, and these might be some of the most durable socks I've ever held. I want you to see that right there. That sock is staying straight. It's not moving. These socks are extremely rigid, and I think that's one of the things that I found that I liked about them. It was almost like putting on a slipper or a house shoe of some kind when I put these on. And I literally wore them the entire time, never took them off except at night when I went to bed. And when I took them off at night, remember, I'm hiking in snow. I'm talking foot deep snow and then melting snow on top of that. At the end of the day, I took the socks off. One, my feet weren't wet and two, they weren't sweaty wet either. There is a difference, and if you've done a lot of hiking, you know what that is. When your feet are wet, they're just soaked. But when they're sweaty wet, they're kind of gross. I didn't have either. My feet were bone dry after wearing these. And if you happen to see my video, which I'll put a link to right up here, you remember there were guys sitting around the fire with their feet near the fire to dry their feet out. I never had to do it because of these socks. There are three layers to this sock, an outer layer, a mid waterproof layer, and then an inner layer that goes up against your feet. These are made to be comfortable, to be dry, and to wick away any kind of sweat that you may possibly have when you're on the trail. The outer is made with 62% polycholin, 29% nylon, and 9% elastane. The waterproof mid membrane is made with a hydrophilic membrane that wicks away sweat while not allowing any moisture to come in through the sock. The inner is made with a 36% merino wool, 36% acrylic, 18% polyester, 5% nylon, and 5% elastane. The long and short of this is these socks do the job. I am interested to see how these things do in the summer when temperatures are here in Kentucky around the upper 80s and into the 90s. I wanna know how these will do. I wanna know if my feet are gonna be mad at me for wearing these. Now, Seal Skins does have a little bit more of a reasonable return policy than maybe in Gingy. It doesn't really say how long you have to return the socks after you've had them. It does say you need to return them with the original packaging and in brand new condition. And they do state that that means they need to be sent in clean and not nasty, basically. So if you're gonna send these things back, don't like go get them all muddy and nasty and then take them back in and expect them to take these things because honestly, they're not gonna do it. They also have something they call the lifetime stretch dry warranty, which basically means as long as these socks continue to do what they're supposed to do, that they keep their shape and they keep their waterproof ability. I don't know if waterproof ability is a word. Waterproof ability, I like it. As long as they keep their shape and they stay waterproof. You don't have to worry about these socks, but if they ever lose either one of those things, as long as they're being used, what they're meant to be used for, these socks will be replaced. Now these aren't quite to the level of the darn tough warranty, but that's a pretty good warranty for something like this. I will tell you, I am now a believer in these waterproof socks. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. And they're definitely something that's worth trying out, although they are expensive. I bought these through Amazon, but you can buy these through Seal Skins website at Seal Skins USA. I'll put a link below in the description so you guys can check those out. These are shockingly good socks. And 
I almost feel bad saying that for some reason because of the purity of being a hiker. You're not supposed to like waterproof socks, but I kind of like these. Like I said, everybody's got their favorite sock, but there are so many options these days for backpacking socks and it's really wise to just go check all the different options and there are so many more than these. I just wanted to give you four completely different kinds of socks so that you could see what options there are out there. If you've ever wanted to try the Njinji socks, I'm gonna tell you, you've got a great opportunity to win yourself four pairs of Njinji socks right now. I already have these socks in my possession and I wanna give them to you. As a matter of fact, one of the boxes comes with a pair of merino wool hiker socks and the included liners. So if you've ever wanted to try out liner socks, this is a great opportunity for you because it comes with a pair of liners, a pair of the toe socks that I showed you from earlier, and a pair of just standard merino wool hiking socks with the included toe sock liners. So this gives you a real opportunity to try something that maybe you've never tried before. I will tell you, Njinji is a fantastic company. They did give these to me to try out first and then to offer them to you guys. And I've had these since last fall. So I have taken these on multiple trips up to this point and I wanted to make sure I understood how they worked, how they felt and how they performed before I ever did a video or offered them to you. If you want to win these socks, all you need to do is be a subscriber and comment below your favorite socks that you hike in right now and why you would want to try out a pair of toe socks. If you found any value in this video whatsoever, would you give me the thumbs up and let me know? Also, if you aren't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you find out anytime one of these videos drops. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next go around. Freaking cars driving by that want to interfere with my recording process. This is art. Try that again without biting myself in the mouth. Ugh. Oh, yeah, I really got myself good. <coughs> oh, my gosh, I'm that movie. How do I not know what synthetic is? Wow. It's a great thing about these, 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 these. Right here. John, why are you even talking like that? That was really drawn out of what? Oh, uh, ooh, hey, I'm right here. Focus on my face. I can't even do this right. I'm trying to read. I'm reading. Idiot.